Hey guys, I'm Tommy Zamp. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to get inside the mix on my second single, Daydream. I'm joined by Jay Brown at Starling Studios, who I've teamed up with. He's co producing all of these songs with me and he's mixing and mastering them at his studio, Starling Studios, up in Saratoga Springs. All the links are going to be in the description box below, so please go check them out. If this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you can be notified of our future releases. So just a little recap on what Inside the Mix is. Every month this year, I'm releasing a new single. Last month, for January, I released This Is What It Feels Like and we did our first episode of Inside the Mix, going into vast detail on how we got to the final mix, how we recorded the tracks, how Jay sculpted them inside Pro Tools, what we did to to get the sounds that we were looking for. That's what we'll be doing with this track as well. So without further ado, hey Jay, what's going on, man? Hey man, psyched to be here, psyched to take a look at the second single off of uh, this 12 song collection. Uh, this, was, yeah. uh, this was a lot of fun to work on. This one was a little different than uh, most of the stuff that, that you've done, quite frankly. Um, yeah. So. I'm also, I'm really looking forward to where we're going to go um, for the months to come because that was part of why I decided to release one song a month. Because collectively on one album, I don't think all of these songs would really make sense. And so I think this kind of lends itself to a fun fun project for us to get into. Yeah, definitely. It's And it's funny when people say, I don't know if these songs would fit on an album together. I have this conversation with people all the time about, you know, is it is it the same genre? Is it the same this or that? And I always say that, you know, if it's the same person singing, the same person writing the songs, they tend to fit together whether you think they do or not. So so this one had a little more of a synth pop vibe than, than the last track. I think that's cool. I think that makes an album yeah. interesting too. So I think if we if we get through the or when we get through these twelve, uh, it'll seem like a really cohesive collection and it and it will be an album. So and it'll be a full yeah, length I mean, album. That's a that's a great way to look at it too. And it's funny, um uh, a buddy of mine was talking to me, you know, uh, a, a, a few months ago we were sitting at a bar outside socially distanced, so of course, let's just yeah. make that clear. Yeah. Um, and we were, we were talking about bands that, that every record sounds the same, and then there's bands that evolve. And there's, there's, there's two different ways to look at it, you know, like, like say, ACDC. There was a great interview, uh, Angus Young was uh, being asked, hey, so how does it feel like to have 12 albums that sound exactly the same? And his response was great. He goes, um, I'm sorry, it's 13 albums. <laughs> uh, you know, so... But, yeah. but if, if, you, if you find that formula and it works and you can keep being creative like ACDC has, like, that's great. Yeah. But then you have other bands that they put out their first record and their second record are vastly different. And I think that's really cool, too. So, yeah. you know, to each his own. Yeah, bands Evolved, Radiohead, great example. You know, first three albums were straight rock and all of a sudden they yeah. become an electronic band. <laughs> yeah. Know, like, uh, they're still what, going. That, that's a great example. Yeah. Great example. Yeah, so. But, so, oh. uh, this is a Inside the Mix, man. So, let's get Inside the Mix on the second single, Daydream. Cool. Let's do it. Daydream. Okay, so before we dive into the mix, uh, let's take a look at what Tommy initially sent me. Um, this was all, all the work that he had done in his own studio, drum programming, uh, the bass, the vocals, and a rough mix. You can hear what I was initially sent, and then we will go into the individual files and see what we did to, to beef it up a bit.
Okay. So you get the idea. Um, Again, the idea is... Sounds great. It's great. It's a hit. (laughs) I don't know why I had to do anything to this. Uh, (laughs) The... The ideas are there. The melodies are there. The parts are all there. And actually, listening to this, I think you redid the vocals at least one time before the vocals that I ended up working with. Those sound, that sounds like a different performance entirely. Um, but one of the biggest things that stuck out to me about this rough mix were the drums. It's literally just a kick and snare for the entire duration. There, It never stops, right? It's just a drum loop. And that's a great way to, if you're not a drummer, if you don't have a drum kit mic'd up to you know, lay down your own drums, just get a loop going so you can write over it. But eventually, something else has to happen in this song, especially to, uh, to make it go from part to part. So if we just look at the drums that I was sent, we can hear what those are isolated. And this is what it was the entire way. Entire way through the song. That's it, right? The whole song. So one of the first things I did was do some programming of drums. Uh, We talked about this a bit last time, how, you know, you don't necessarily need a drum drummer these days or a mic'd up drum kit uh with some of these cool new plugins and you know i think you're going to find over the next 12 months that i'm giving steven slate a lot of shout outs because uh (laughs) that's what i use right so what i did was uh take that simple drum pattern and just started to beef it up a bit. So you will hear some other things in the background, by the way, some things that are set to uh, pre-fader and whatnot, some wind noise. You might hear some backing vocals come in and out, and we can talk about why you're hearing those at some other point. But for now, let's just take a look at what these drums turned into instead of just that simple kick and snare pattern. And you're going to hear much different sounds as well. So we've still got that four on the floor beat going. We're going to hear different fills. And now we have some cymbals in there, right? So I I still kept to the original groove of the song. It's definitely still a four on the floor, do, 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 going the whole time. But I just added some life to it, these snare fills, these cymbals in the overheads. And then when we get to this pre-chorus part, you know, with the whole song going, this is what the pre-chorus was, and you heard it in the original demo Tommy sent, but this is what it turns into with these drums. Getting burned in that California sun Palm trees and tattoos on everyone right. Again, as opposed to the drum pattern, which was this. Tattoos for everyone Right, nothing changed at all in that drum loop. So now we've got these fills. We've got a different kind of groove. And let's get that was the overheads. Let's get all of our drums. Starting that pre-chorus again. Right. So now we've got a little bit of life going from part to part. And when we get to the chorus, we're going to hear something else come in as well. And I put these hi-hats in here to give you that classic kind of, you know, almost disco-y groove. And this is what it sounds like with everything going. And then we'll isolate the drums again. So with everything going into the chorus, I guess, this is what it would sound like. It's beautiful So just this little hi-hat by itself, it doesn't sound like much. That's literally what the hi-hat is doing. But with all the drums, now we've got... And I did just crank that hi-hat That's so cool. Yeah, it adds a totally different groove to it. It just makes you want to move a little more, right? Um, The hi-hat did just go up in volume quite a bit because I wanted you to be able to hear it a little better. But in the mix, this is what everything sounds like now going into that kind of chorus part. This beautiful And those crashes on the ones, just signifying those transitions. It's just such a a big part. The simple snare fills, 
uh, the addition of that hi-hat, when we get to some of the other parts in the song, the drums become more complicated. Um, that hi-hat pattern gets a little busier. We can jump to, uh, looks like this is maybe right after the solo or in the solo. Let's check it out. Same kind of thing. Now we get a little busier. It brings so much light to the group. And it's, these, it's like these little sparkles of, of goodness that just get sprinkled on top yeah. that, you, you know, they just catch your ear, but you don't really pay attention to them. Exactly. But they're there and they change the whole vibe. And if they weren't there, it would just be, again, that kind of straightforward four on the floor. But that really, you know, that really adds some life to it. So if you listen to that part in the mix. <laughs> So that was really production wise, a really big thing that changed how this song felt. Right. Um, and again, if, you know, if we're getting the technical side of it, all of those drums are uh, Stephen Slate SSD uh, and uh, really, really cool sounds. Um, and I should say what I use to just get that simple loop going, I, 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 believe it's a easy drummer too yeah. is the program that i have yeah. i just found a quick loop to write over it and then when i sent it over to you you were able to hear the idea but then with the program that you use you can you can build on top of that exactly yeah so and i did break this out into individual tracks so again there are the overheads there is a snare track if we go th whoops if we go through these uh one at a time we can hear what those sound like um We've got this snare. And there is a lot of stuff going on on these two. There is, even though these are samples, there's still some EQ to brighten things up. Um, looks like I added a little bit of mid to that too, some compression. Because uh, I did I did play these. I didn't pencil them in. So these are actually played on a keyboard. Just to, again, give it a little more life. If we look at the velocity of these notes, we're going to see that they're not all the same. And the velocity is how hard the key was actually hit. And that actually determined what that snare sounds like. So it's not just the snare, the same snare over and over and over. It does actually sound like someone's playing. And that's a really important part of programming drums too. You don't want it to sound like a robot. You want it to sound like someone actually did play them. Um, and I think if you listen to awesome. this, you might not guess that these were just midi drums right uh, a couple kick drums in here same deal and that's just pretty much four on the floor the whole way through i didn't change much on that and something with a little more attack probably eq to bring some of that attack out as well yep and it sure is so and then again together all the drums On the drum bus, a uh, little bit of reverb. A lot of times I don't put things right on the drum bus like this, but it was just easier than setting up a separate bus. It, you can see the dry wet percentage is almost nothing. It's like, I wonder what this would even sound like without it. It might just be adding a little bit of life to the snare. Very minimal, but for some reason I kept it on there, so it must have been doing something. Uh, but a lot of that <laughs> reverb is coming from again the the slate trigger you know you'll see, notice this is an actual audio track of snare uh this was printed from the snare midi track and that was so that it could actually use trigger on this and this is where we're hearing a lot of that that reverb on the snare because i do have this snare verb sample in here so if we listen to this by itself we've got that and then all of them together batter snare hard snare and that snare verb and together that your lips say you're moving so lovely so that's what the drums look like for this song and that really again production wise that was a really big part of of getting this song to have the energy that it does in the final product um i didn't do anything with any of your melodies or the length of the song or the structure just kind of went in and uh you know added some life to things so um, moving on from there, Brilliant. if we look at the bass, uh, not a whole lot to talk about with the bass. You you played the bass just like you did on the last track. Um, it's a simple bass part. It follows right along with those chords. But if we solo the bass and check out what it sounds like. Got some compression on there. Yeah, um, I just really went 
for that like 70s funk vibe yep. like that fat sounding p bass if you will absolutely yeah what kind of bass did you use uh i, I have a schecter model t bass cool. that i've had for 15 years cool. it sounds good it sounds good um for this uh eq I think I kept some high end in this. I actually rolled it off quite a bit. Um, a little bit more mid in there for that growl, some compression. The sans amp is right on the channel itself, and that's what's giving us a lot of that buzz. Without the sans amp, we're going to hear a much cleaner sound. Without the EQ, a little more of that high end in there. Just took that out. Throw that back on there. And yeah. then it is going into... You must have actually had this on here. Uh, I, I do. Yeah. So whatever's on here is all what you did, and I didn't even change that. It looks like it's routed to the space aux, and uh, was going through that. So I didn't change anything on this. It's funny. I, I talk about Stephen Slate all the time, but I actually don't really use uh, the rack for some reason. But it's cool to see it. Uh, I think it's. Like I think that. it's brilliant. It's a great, great plugin. Yeah. yeah. It saves you a yeah. lot of a uh, lot of time from finding things and. You can do everything right within this rack. You can load up your compression, your EQ, your effects, and everything else. So very. Cool. And I, I may have tweaked some of some of that, but I mean, you can see it's already it's at the fat base preset. Fat base. So you know what you want. You fat know? base. Yeah. The presets it. are great, yeah. uh, and not just Stephen Slate, but on nine out of ten plugins that you use, it I use a lot of the presets. It's just quick to get me in the in the. Uh, general area the circle that i want exactly. and then i can just adjust little things here and there exactly especially if you don't know what a plugin does i mean some of the more creative plugins like the sound toys plugins that aren't necessarily a traditional tools it's not like oh here's a compressor or here's an eq it's just something kind of wacky messing around with those presets really gives you an idea of how that plugin actually works so when uh, i'm absolutely. teaching uh you know i tell my students yeah go ahead and use the presets don't rely on them because if you choose vocal preset for a compressor that preset has no idea what kind of vocal you're dealing with. But if you want to see what they're calling a vocal compression preset, then great. Maybe you will understand that plugin a little better. And it is, as you said, a great way right. to, you know, immediately get that high pass filter on there and a boost to the highs without having to turn seven different parameters at once or putting all these things <laughs> in here. So yeah, no presets are, can be great. So that's the bass. And if we hear that with the drums, uh, again, we've just got... And any little inconsistencies in the rhythm of the bass actually help, you know, even the, the drums feel like they've got a little more life. I mean, the playing is great on that. But, you know, if you hear like a you note know, a tiny bit early, it just makes it seem again more like it is a live band rather than uh, you playing bass by yourself and program drums. So I think that's cool. Right. I didn't do any time correction or anything to the bass. So very cool. Um, let's move on to the keys, because this is where this song is really different than a lot of the stuff that you've done. Um, usually your songs are very guitar driven and this one wasn't, it, it's very synth driven, right? Uh, so let's check yeah. out what these things were. I think these might've been things I added. We'll look at those in a second. So let's look at what you initially sent. Um, daydream keys and what did you use for the keys? Are these, were these MIDI? I, I used, um, I used a program in universal audio. That's what I'm running here at my, my studio. Um, and I used, uh, I believe it was a setting in Revel. Okay. Um, and just, I went through a bunch of different synth settings yep. and uh, I can't off the top of my head. I, if I can figure it out, I'll, I'll put it in the description if you're curious to know what the setting was for this. I'll leave a link below. Cool. Was it MIDI originally? Did you print it to audio or did you actually record? Yes, it was. Yeah. It was MIDI okay. and I printed it cool. and sent it over. Cool. Great. So let's check out what we have here. Jump to the middle. That wind at the beginning we keep hearing is mine. Uh, I'm actually, you know what I can do? I'm actually just going to mute that clip entirely so we don't keep hearing that. And that should take care of it. Let's see. So that's the that's the synth part, and that goes throughout the entire song. So one of the first things I did with this, I could have used sidechain to the kick, sidechain compression, um, but I love this 
simple one knob uh, pumper. Uh, it's from Waves. All of their one knob stuff is really cool. And you can see it glowing right here. And what that what that is indicating is uh, the timing with which this knob is actually going to pump our audio. So with this turned on, we now kind of feel like there's this, you know, if the kick were going, we'd hear it kind of going opposite of the kick. So now it's on. And if we crank that up, you can really hear what this tool does. But you turn it down, and it's just a gentle pumping of that, right? So it's just... Oh, that's so cool. I, I've always wondered what you did for that, because I the, the first thing I noticed was this push and pull. Yep. And I was like, that's not what I sent you, but it's very cool. Yeah. And it, again, adds more life to just that one part. Exactly. So if we were to listen to that with just, you know, a kick drum, we should hear those things working together and again i could have set up some routing for something called sidechain compression to achieve that same effect when you listen to dance music or techno and you hear that zzz, zzz, zzz on the synth that's something called sidechain compression this is just a much easier way of achieving that effect uh and this is what it sounds like with the kick <laughs> So, and I had that on there lightly, again, just to give it a little bit of life, uh, added some EQ. Let's see what that's doing to this. Probably brightening it up. Nope, it's just taking out some low end, if there was any there at all. Um, and if we, hit that, we can see. yeah, so it's taken just a little bit of that low out of there. Uh, probably to make room for the vocal. And then what did I do with ozone on a track? Probably some sort of widening. That would be my guess. Uh, yeah, I'm using it for the imager. So uh, I put all the low end in the center and actually really pushed all those highs out really far. So let's see what that sounds like. And if you have headphones on, there was a pretty big difference between those two things right there. Yeah. Uh, it really kind of puts that synth back a little bit and over here instead of out front and uh it also uh got rid of a little bit of that, that low end in there so that's that synth the other synth parts that you sent uh weren't doing a whole lot you had these uh this line at the end my wind is back must have had more wind in there <laughs> yeah. uh actually that might even be the same is that the same keyboard part? Just it yeah, is. Just as an outro, um, probably yeah. the same thing to that. And then we had these little guys in here. Let's see what they're doing. Sounds like the whirly. Got all that stuff that I did on there. So that's what you played, and then we threw some EQ on there. Definitely taking low end out of it. And this is one of those tools I was talking about, you know, Crystallizer. Um, it's a pretty cool tool. Uh, it says Granular Echo Synthesizer. But, you know, this is one of those things where if you mess around with the presets, um, you can find some really cool stuff. And this is what I put on here. Just gives you a little bit of that out-of-tune delay on there. A um, couple different times. It is panned off to the right and then just some compression to... If we hear that in the mix. I think I had had little Alter Boy on there. I think I, yeah, I, I tried to see what that would sound like if that were up an octave. Uh, this is a really cool tool. Again, Sound Toys, little Alter Boy. But it, yeah, that's, what, that's right. It got a little funky in there for some reason. It might have been because the uh, crystallizer. Usually this tool works really well, but um, it didn't. Uh, do what it was supposed to all the way through. So I think I just left it off. And that's what we're looking at with the, all the keys that you sent. Um, as far as things that I added in here, we do keep hearing that awesome wind track. Let's take a look at what that is doing. Uh, very integral part of the song. <laughs> it, it really is. <laughs> it's the first thing you it hear. It is the first thing you hear. You're right. If we listen to the top of this, this is what we hear at the very beginning. <laughs> There's the wind. So what that is is uh, white noise. That's one of my favorite uh, kind of riser tricks to use. 
yes, that is what that's supposed to sound like. That's called white noise. I put in automated filter sweep on here. So if we watch this, as this goes, we're going to see the cutoff move to open up and make it seem like it's a gust of wind, right? This is going to open up and let those higher frequencies in. And that's what gives us that effect. Oh, that's down. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> little compression and then that is being sent to reverb as well so we get this kind of cool effect here. Yep. and then the other thing we have at the beginning this was uh this is straight out of expand that also has the filter automated on it this is what this sounds like and i wonder why oh is this pre-fader that's why we keep hearing the wind okay because it's a pre-fader send this is what this keyboard sounds like with an opening cutoff as well. And, you know, talk about presets. Expand is, you know, I literally chose something called Glittering Pad. I probably didn't change anything on that. Maybe I changed the cutoff a little bit or the release to give us a little bit of something, but I certainly didn't go through here and create anything in Expand. You know, this is a really easy tool to use in Pro Tools. Pro Tools doesn't come with the best uh, virtual instruments. Uh, you really do have to buy some stuff to get something good, but for simple pads like this, Expand does have some pretty cool stuff in here. So, what that did to the beginning of this song was just make, uh, you know, kind of this, this more ethereal opening uh, for the opening vocals of Daydream. Daydream. And that's it. And then the other Very sense, cool, man. Very cool. Yeah. The other synths that I added in there were just uh, simple things. This was expand again, and this just kind of followed some of the stuff that you had. Uh, it was just adding a higher pitch. I think this is what I ended up doing because... Nope, I take it back. It's not. I thought I was going to say this was a higher pitch because the uh, Wurlitzer part, I wasn't able to pitch up. But this is what this part sounds like. And again, just a cheesy expand sound in there. That's really cool. Yeah. And in the mix, this is where it's sitting. Getting burned in that California sun. Palm trees and tattoos on everyone. Time keeps on rolling on. I keep falling in love with this beautiful. Just added that high end. I, I love this high note. Uh, this, remind, this is so like 70s, you know, strings in a, in a disco song or something, hit, hanging out on that note. Daydream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but again, that's just a, uh, you know, dreaming action pad with an expand. I probably didn't change much else on that. So, um... Let's see. I think that's all the synth stuff. That wind comes in and out. This synth does, you know, go throughout the song. There's some other parts, something a little different over the chorus, but essentially doing the same thing the whole time. Just kind of holding that high end down, adding a little bit of action and movement uh, and harmonic content up in that, that upper area that wasn't there before. And then on to the guitars. Overall, you know, compared to the other session that we've looked at so far, this is a pretty simple session. Um, Let's see. These two guitar tracks, it looks like it was very important for me to keep them in there. Uh, there's nothing on them. <laughs> looks like I was really in uh, good session management mode when I was mixing this, so those should just be gone. Um, let's check out the guitars we had here. So that's what you recorded. And that's pretty much what that guitar does the entire song. Yeah. And like the other, like all the other tracks that, that I recorded, um, uh, even like last, uh, the last single, this is what it feels like. Everything was recorded through the Oxbox. Um, yeah. I used, uh, I used that strat for all the rhythm sections 
uh, that part and the other part you'll hear coming up. Um, and I just sent it straight through. Uh, I, I believe on this track I used my uh, a Fender Hot Rod DeVille. Awesome. On the uh, most of the other tracks, I, I basically used my uh, 68 Deluxe Reverb. Um, and then for the solo, I know was going through the my 62 SG cool. um, to get those that crunchy P90 vibe going. But uh, but that was it. And there's as far as a song that I've written and recorded. Basically, having three guitar tracks is completely unheard yeah, of. <laughs> yeah, definitely. There's no, there's no monstrous doubles on here. No multiple mics. No. <laughs> yeah, uh, and that's a really cool, really cool guitar part too. It's, yeah. Awesome. Um, I just threw some EQ to brighten that up and take out some of that low end because we do have all those synths going uh, and some compression. A little bit of reverb on here. Put it off to the side a little bit. And then there is uh, some volume automation on here, right? So uh, every time there were vocals, I did take it down and then row the fader up a little bit just to bring that in between those vocal lines out a little bit more. So if we check that out, this is what it, what it uh, sounds like. Keep on talking slowly, pretty And you'll see that all the way through the song, right? Uh, what's this part over here? Obviously, I got a little more aggressive with this. Uh, oh, this was the solo. Uh, so let's see why that happened. And that was just to bring out those just those high in between high the parts. phrasing of the solo exactly. yeah. yeah so that's what's going on the automation there the other guitar part you had was uh going when the other uh things weren't happening <laughs> sounds like you added a phaser of some sort yeah so without any of the stuff i put on there this is what we had. Yeah. So that's going during the pre chorus part. Getting burned in that California sun. Palm trees. And so I did add a phaser. I added EQ. Get yeah, I love the phaser on those, those chords. Same kind of deal. Really took out that low end on this. Uh, it boosted that. A little bit of compression. Oh, yeah. There. Look at that. Yeah. So um, that's what that sounds like all together. Palm trees and tattoos on every wall. Time keeps on rolling on. I keep falling in love with this beautiful day. And then you have your solo. And those are the only three guitar tracks in the song. Let's check out what the solo is doing. That's a pretty awesome solo. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, it's an okay plan. <laughs> so I, I, I can't, I can't remember if I put this on, but I'm a, I'm a, a huge fan of the Kramer Master Tape, especially for its, its, you know, delay features. Did you put that I was on, just, or did I? Send I was that? just going to ask you if you did. I think you probably did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I did. Yeah. I, I, I love that yeah. thing, especially on, on like its hard parts. Yeah, I think it's incredible. Yeah. It's a really cool delay. Um, I mean, tape delay has such a you know distinct sound compared to like uh, just a you know a regular delay plugin. Without that, let's see what we're hearing. So you definitely recorded this with some delay on it too. In the setting in the aux, I had I had delay on the track. Cool. If it wasn't delay on the track, then I used the uh, MXR 
carbon copy delay. Awesome. And I think that's actually now that I'm thinking about it, I did. I used the uh, the Oxbox just for EQ and compression. And but going into the amp, I had the uh, JHS Bonsai pedal and the MXR carbon copy. Cool. Um, and that was that was the dead sound that you heard going in. And then I, I boosted more delay with the, the Kramer tape. Yeah. So again, without without this plug in here. And then with it. Really accentuate the trails. Yeah, and you've got, I mean, you've got this up to 500 milliseconds, too. That's a nice long delay, half a second. Yeah. That's cool. But it works it, it works with the solo that isn't, doesn't have a lot of movement. It's more like slowly phrased out. Because if the whole thing, if you're just like shredding like that, then all that delay just gets all mumbled up together and, and, and de you lose all definition and it just sounds like a complete mess. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it looks like you used uh, the rack again. You definitely added some some high end and took out some lows and... Uh, some some level with uh, the the FG compressor, and then the only other thing I did to this, um, I didn't do anything else except add uh, you know this this filter again automated at the very end here, and I I think I did some verify to this to get that pitch drop. Uh, if we listen to the very end, <laughs> or did maybe that was what you did? I don't know. I can't remember. No, I did that. That was cool. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I, happens. I, I, I love it, but I would I wouldn't know how to do yeah, that. So yeah. uh, it's actually very easy. Um, but so with you know within the solo with all those effects and everything. So just a cool way to transition. It's almost like a whammy bar dive. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, it's a replication of the old you know record player slowdown. And you'll and you'll see, there's no there's no no, no bar on this on the SG. <laughs> <laughs> None of that. Um, cool. And uh, then we've got you know the the most plentiful of tracks in this session were the vocals, um, and we can uh, take a look through all these. And this is where you know as far as any processing, uh, I probably did you know quite a bit more, changed things quite a bit from from where you had them. Uh, if you listen to the initial demo again. You do hear the vocals are really thin, uh, you know, just not very, honestly, very pleasant to listen to, even these openings here. Extreme. Just a lot of that kind of high end that isn't necessarily what people uh, want to hear. Um, so I did did take a lot of that out, added a lot of the body back into the vocals. So let's just start with these, these opening vocals, the daydreams. Um, so those are that's a really cool harmony part i put them out much wider than you had them eq wise i did not do as big a scoop as i do on some other backing vocals we will see that later on but uh left in you know a good amount of those lows and boosted the highs what you are hearing on there is a little bit of a wah, 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 wah kind of sound and that's actually on the right. uh daydream bus this filter gate Daydream. Which is Daydream. really cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Daydream. So with everything else, and then they're going to reverb, of course, and uh, a little bit of a slap delay. So with in the mix. Daydream. We've got that going on. So wow. that's cool. Um, really cool way to open a song and especially set the vibe for what the whole song is about. Lead vocal wise, let's check. Keep on talking slowly, pretty lady. Yeah, these are pretty affected vocals, right? Um, there wasn't a double in this song necessarily. Uh, there were uh, there were some octaves for the harmonies down here, but um, unlike some of the other songs that we've done, there wasn't a, another vocal to really kind of thicken this up. Keep on talking slowly, pretty lady. So that's the dry vocal right there. I keep forgetting these are in touch mode right. here. I just added a bunch of automation that I didn't want. Um, so there's a doubler on there. 
Keep on talking slowly, pretty lady. And that just gives it a little bit of like a chorusing effect, right? A doubler is literally adding additional voices that are a, a little bit out of tune, uh, a little bit different level, and then it's putting them in the stereo field out a little wider. So it's making your vocal wider as well as making it sound like there might be someone else singing with you. Um, EQ wise, probably brighten these up a little bit. Oh, actually did the opposite. Took out some of that. Uh, I don't know why I would have done that, but something was, was clearly, clearly bothering me in there. Let's see. Keep on talking also, slowly. Uh, to go back to when we Keep originally on... AB'd these, uh, it's very much a different performance. I, Definitely. what I sent you originally, I recorded here, but then I redid the vocals when I was down in Philadelphia. Um, I was at Brian Quinn uh, from Candlebox. I was at his his studio, and uh, he was out for the day, and he said, use it. So I went in, and I set up a mic, and I, re I recut all the vocals at his place. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, these, these you know, if we did go back to the demo, obviously a much better performance here. Um, so, you know, EQ, compression, DSing, um, but was really just going for more of like a, a vibey, dreamy vocal on this so that's why we do have all these effects on here and uh you know there's there's our good friend auto tune again uh i'm hey. sure he, i'm sure it's not doing much you know just just keeping you a little little bit on there <laughs> uh but for these harmonies um pretty lady without anything on there pretty lady so definitely high passed, uh, especially since, you know, we hear some some mic pops on there and stuff, but really thinning those out so that they're not competing with uh, the lead vocal here. And together, this is what these sound like. Keep on talking slowly, pretty lady. And those go throughout the entire song. And then we get to the pre-chorus part, and you'll see the volume automation is written on there just to keep these things uh, a little more level. Um, down here, we get to the pre-chorus vocal. I... A lot of this, since it wasn't necessarily supposed to be a completely different vocal sound, I probably just honestly dragged straight from uh, this vocal. Uh, let's see if we can hear anything sonically different about this. Getting burned in that California sun. Well, the doubler might actually be a little heavier on this, and it is. The gain is actually louder on those doubles for the pre-chorus. It was at negative 11 uh, for these other ones. So it looks like I did turn up the doubling effect quite a bit on the pre-chorus. And uh, EQ-wise, we're probably going to see something pretty similar. Oh, actually something different. So we've got these boosts in the high end there. Um, reverb and delay sounds might be a little different. Uh, nothing on the reverb and delay. So, but in here, this is what we're looking at. Getting burned in that California sun Palm trees and tattoos on everyone Without that doubler, you know, we don't have that you know, almost synthetic vocal sound. Getting burned in that California sun Palm trees and tattoos on everyone Time keeps on a rolling on And then I know that I did tune this high vocal pretty heavily, so we'll hear something a little uh, robotic on this. Time keeps on a rolling on I keep falling in love with this beautiful <laughs> But you know what? No one will ever notice that tucked in there like this. Time keeps on a rolling on. I keep falling in love with this beautiful daydream. <laughs> so this is the part of the video I'm going to cut out. <laughs> no, it's no. It's all part no. of the process, man. All part of the process. You're right. It's some high singing. <laughs> you got to gotta, gotta tune those octaves out. Uh, and then these really cool, I, I loved all the harmonies you did in this. I think there was some really cool stuff going on. Beautiful daydream. 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 Some flange around there. Yeah. Some, did you do that or did I do that? I don't know. I don't even, I don't even remember. That was you. Cool. Daydream. Yeah, all the vocals I sent you were pretty, pretty dry. dry. Yeah. yeah. So this is a lot more, uh, these are a lot more effects than I would normally put in a song, but this was just, it's against it's that like synth pop vibe. It's completely different than other things and just wanted everything to have that like dreamy synthesizer kind of vibe to it. So that's why you see things like flanging and doublers and, and even the auto tune adds its own kind of effect to it. Right. Sometimes auto tune can be used for more of an effect rather than actually keeping something uh, in tune. 
So, and then we've got all these other back. Daydream. Yeah. Daydream. That's cool. That's going to a, yeah. a four time doubler uh, and then a phaser as well. So without these effects on the bus, we're just going to hear regular sounding vocals. But with those things. That's cool. Yeah, that's very cool. <laughs> that's very cool. And that's, uh, you know, that that vocal goes throughout the entire song. Um, and then, y- you know, we've got the same kind of things that we looked at last time. I'm still using all these uh, Stephen Slate reverbs and delays and uh things like that and then all of my mastering plugins um one of the questions i had from last month's episode was um uh do you have different aux channels set up with reverb for specifically just vocals or reverb an aux channel reverb for specifically guitar or or do you have them all on the same one i usually have different reverbs for everything um and uh, you know i mentioned this last time this was a session that you sent me uh my sessions like if i if i used one of my templates or if i started something from scratch honestly look a little more organized than this um but i just i just kept a lot of your stuff like verb 2 is definitely one of your your buses right i wouldn't call anything verb mm-hmm. 2 i would have this called you know guitar verb or something like that so um, but I imagine my, the normal reverb on this, I'm sure is for the vocals. If we look at what the vocals are going to on this, I'm sure it's going to say reverb one and it does. And I bet this verb two thing, uh, I have set up as a bigger reverb. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of a longer tail on there and let's see what's actually going to that, um, to the verb two, probably this wind, uh, you know, if we look at that, I bet that's going down there. Uh, no, that's actually going to reverb one, too. Uh, the answer is yes. Normally, I do have things going to different spaces, especially okay. if there's big drums, especially if there's backing vocals that are going to be in a completely different space, like a bunch of oohs and ahs that need to sound like they're in a, you know, more of a cathedral type setting as opposed to a small plate reverb. And what you'll see in my sessions a lot of times are even if I don't have it called vocal reverb. Uh, you might see small verb, medium verb, and, and big verb. So that I at least have these different options of, of places to right, send them. Right. And then same thing with the delays. I've usually got a slap, a medium, and a long delay uh, so that I can choose those. And then I, you know, if I need to create more buses as I go through, then I just do that and call them backing vocal verb or, or you know, guitar solo verb or whatever the case may be. But the, the, the short answer to that question is yes, and the longer answer is uh, it is you know, from session to session going to change a little bit. Yeah. Right now. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and again, you know, even with even with having on the drums, again, one of your buses, uh, I would never spell drums with three S's. You know, it's just it's not <laughs> how you spell it. <laughs> but uh, having a reverb right on there, normally not something something I would do. Uh, but nothing wrong with doing, it, especially if you just want a, a little bit of something like this. And it's funny using different programs also depends on on how I mix. If I'm mis- mixing an Ableton, I'm actually much more likely to put things like reverbs and delays right on a track rather than using the sends. And I don't know why that is. Um, uh, you know, I started using Ableton after I started using Pro Tools, but I have a mm. much different process in Ableton than I do in uh, Pro Tools, even when it comes down to mixing. So that's uh, that's that's really what went into this mix. And my, my mastering is no different than it was for the last track. Um, I actually did have the last track in here. I know I talked about this Magic AB plugin last time. Um, but I had, this is what it feels like, the final mix in there, just so I could make sure that now that we've got that song done and mastered, I'm basing all the other songs that we do for the rest of the year level-wise and sonically on that track. So I'll be continually, uh, you know, for, for the... For the fourth mix that we do, which is uh, going to be drums again, I'll definitely be referring to this is what it feels like and now daydream and so forth throughout the throughout the year, just to make sure that all those songs Great. are sonically and level wise sounding like they belong together. So, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And then you know the the meter uh, slate digital definitely adding some life. I I love this mastering plugin. You can really get this actually adds a lot of uh oomph to the drums as well. This low punch, the high end detail and then this dynamic um uh perception here. Uh you can really have, you know, your your transients 
hitting a little bit harder using this slider over here uh, and just using these knobs. So this is a really cool plugin. All involved in the Slate All Access Pass. And then Ozone, <laughs> uh, I'm sure, again, some of that stereo imaging is happening here. Probably some basic EQ. Oh, no EQ at all in there. Um, Exciter, adding a little bit in that low end, adding a lot of brightness to this, uh, and then a little bit of uh, the, the limiter on here as well. So, And that's what we got. That is the session for Daydream. And overall, this, uh, this is a really, really cool track. Let's just check, awesome, out, man. Let's check out the ending here. See what happens as we as we end, and then we can wrap this up. Some vocal stuff in there. I love all of those those vocals at the end. Such cool parts. They play together uh, with they play off of each other really well. So nice job. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah. Well, guys, that's gonna do it for this episode of Inside the Mix, featuring my second single, Daydream. Thanks so much, Jay. I really appreciate all the work and everything you put into this song. I think it turned out great. And as usual, I can't wait for the rest of these songs to do uh, more of these videos and for for all of you in YouTube land and internet world to check these tunes out. I'm really stoked to, uh, to share them all with you. I will have all the links posted below in the description box. All the, all the songs that we do in all of these episodes are available on all streaming platforms. Pandora, Apple Music, Spotify. They're also available on iTunes and Amazon. So if you enjoy the tune, go check it out. I'll have all the links listed below in the description box for Starling Studios and StarlingRecordings.com. So go check them out. Give Jay a like and a share. Follow him on Instagram and Facebook as well. Thanks again, my friend. And uh, we'll do this again. Sounds good. Oh,